kind of reminds me it's you know in scripture where it's, it's either you're hot for me or cold for me but not lukewarm right right so god calls us uh to be full-hearted in everything we do we do do we lose heart absolutely you can lose heart but what do you do you ask god god rekindle this fire rekindle this heart and give me the anointing uh, give me the anointing uh, and give me the power of the Holy Ghost. Give me these things that uh, that will help me uh, do this wholeheartedly. Welcome back, everybody, to the Light It Up podcast, episode 24. With us today, we have our co-host, Rafael Alvarez. What's up, y'all? And our guest today, Pastor Daniel Nagel. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So, um, Pastor Nagel uh, is a pastor in the, or one of the pastors in Modesto right now, and uh, he wanted to talk about uh, youth ministry. So, uh, being a, a young adult uh, and being in ministry, there are a few factors that come into play, a few circumstances that we can, or issues that we can run into, and he's going to answer a few questions, kind of going through that. He was a youth pastor, so he has a lot of experience um, with youth and a lot of experience kind of with ministry, so I'm going to be asking him questions, and he's going to uh, answer about how you should how you should work in your ministry and your attitude about your ministry. But before we start, Pastor Nago is going to give a quick testimony of how he got saved. So Pastor Nago, why don't you start? Uh, awesome. Well, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to be uh, in this podcast, in this space. So thanks to Wyatt and to uh, Raphael, our AKA Rafa. Uh, appreciate the, <laughs> uh, the, the opportunity. Um, and I, I got saved in August of 2002 uh, in Lakewood, Washington. My uh, pastor then was Pastor Freddie Gonzalez Jr. Uh, the way we found the church is uh, we were looking for a church. We moved from the island of Guam uh, to uh, Lakewood, and we were looking for a place of worship. We'd gone to just about every church in in, in town, uh, so uh, we like I said, every church, uh, we just didn't fit uh, in uh, to certain churches or certain places of worship. And uh, we're like, okay, well, we're going to probably worship from home or figure this out from home. And we know the importance of being assembled together and not forsaking the assembly and not forsaking church. And uh, right. uh, on the way home, uh, we uh, saw a sign, an A-frame. You know, back in the day, they used to have A-frames that you would put by the streets and uh, we're like hey look at that look at that a-frame there's a little globe on fire we know that's pentecostal uh so long story short uh, we walked into the church that uh saturday the pastor was working in the church and i kid you not the thing that uh brought us to the church was they had an overhead projector uh this might be before your guys' time but an overhead projector uh Doesn't that had the little <laughs> the little slides you know so before the screens they had these little um uh slides uh and, you know they would move it up and uh we wanted to participate in worship and that's what brought us back to church i came to church uh that sunday morning that church that sunday night and it wasn't until the wednesday service that i uh, gave my life to jesus and uh since then I i've been serving god so since august 2002 so about 20 years of my life has been devoted to uh serving god and giving my life to jesus and making sure that uh I keep my heart uh, in check, uh, but here I am uh, fulfilling the will of God and continue to do that. But uh, truly grateful for the opportunity to be here, but also grateful for the opportunity to be saved uh, and for God to really deal with my life and deal with my brokenness uh, growing up in a broken home, uh, dealing with uh, those types of issues. Uh, but one thing I've learned uh, in life is that I don't allow the issues are the circumstances of life to determine my uh, my outlook uh, in life, uh, in a sense, just because I grew up in a 
uh, as they often say in our fellowship, jacked up, messed up to, from the floor up, uh, 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 family or community or whatever it may be. Uh, I didn't allow that to determine, you know what, I need to be just like the community I come from or what have you. So I uh, made some changes. And I did that all as a, a young guy, as a young man, as a teenager, and uh, I've been trekking on uh, since then. Wow, awesome. So um, when did you be, uh, become part of ministry as a youth pastor? Was it in that original church you had been in? It was in the original church there, uh, Pastor Freddie, and I uh, remember my first uh, uh, ministry was to operate the overhead projector uh, to move the slides <laughs> up and down. And uh, what brought you to think church? that's what what brought me to church was <laughs> what I was able to minister in. Uh, you know, just amazing how those things work out that way. And uh, so I did that and I uh, became a bass player. I'm not good by any means, uh, but I played the bass. Uh, done about everything. I remember being 15 years old and leading an impact team that came from Tucson, uh, Arizona, and uh, leading the group of people that went out to outreach and uh, did that ministry there. And uh, I, I think I've done every ministry uh, in church that I could think about, uh, at least in my in my home church. So uh, very humbling, very grateful for every opportunity. Even scrubbing toilets uh, was part of my ministry. And uh uh, and song leading, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but uh, so grateful. Scrubbing toilets was my ministry when I first started. Uh, when I first joined the ministry, before my pastor even told me anything, he was like, "Rafa, before anything, you got to learn how to clean these toilets." <laughs> he told me in the back, and I remember the first day of joining ministry is like he took me in the back after service and just showed me how to clean toilets and all that. So it's definitely something that it should be looked at something is a good ministry that is and many people are like i don't want to club no i don't want to clean no toilets and all that so well that's true right like hey that. if you don't want if you don't want to clean toilets you don't deserve to be in any other ministry mm -hmm. you know uh that's where i you know i i did too i mean I, I i found everything to do but yeah absolutely uh and that talk about humility right just to i mean even for my own life that's like of course, uh, me clean toilets. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. Uh, but such, such a time as this, right? All that prepares us for uh, what God has uh, in destiny for all of us. Yeah, and um, really the, the core for any ministry is just desiring to do something for the church, for the work of God. That's really what you're doing in any ministry, even if you're scrubbing the toilets. You're doing it for the church. You're doing it for God, even though it may seem weird. So uh, that's a good point that if you don't want to scrub toilets, then your heart's not in the right place because it has to be a desire to do something. Anything. Absolutely. There are guys who are just like, I'll do anything, Pastor. I'll do anything. You know, it's, it's a, tell me what to do, you know, kind of thing. That's a, it's like a new convert kind of guy. And um, you know, that's what that's what pastors are looking for, people who are willing to work, willing to do anything. Uh, for the church um absolutely so uh first off we're going to talk about barriers uh in your ministry so uh pastor nega i want you to kind of explain the idea behind barriers in your ministry and uh, then we'll ask a few questions about it absolutely um you know one of the things that i um looked into was even the word teenager uh, the word teenager was not even introduced into America uh, till 1940. Uh, so those of you watching could do the math uh, for yourself or figure it out. But 1940, and we are in the year uh, 2023. So that's not that long ago, right? So really thinking about this. So uh, before 1940, you were either a kid or an adult. So... Uh, this whole thing about teenagers, I feel like it's an excuse of why someone can't do something. Well, I'm just a teenager. Well, I think one of the youngest mayors in America was 12 years old. So uh, I'm there not sure a, what. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you're right. I, uh, I've heard, there's, I forget the name, but it's a 14-year-old who became a doctor. 
Yeah, so I often think like, what's the barrier? Well, maybe is it the teenage excuse? I, I don't know. Uh, so I right. think that becomes a barrier uh, in in any ministry is who says you have to be a certain age uh, in a sense to be in a particular ministry, whatever ministry that is, right? Obviously, the, you, there's there's balance in your uh, with age and what have you. Uh, but who said you can't be 12 years old and uh, be in a ministry or to serve in a capacity? Uh, so I think there's that barrier of saying, well, I, I, I'm not old enough or I am uh, too young or whatever those challenges may be. Because in the 1920s, when all this started, uh, well, not all this started, but when uh, the whole culture, the youth culture, God, they prepared young people to be adults. And uh, uh, and I believe that's what the kingdom of God is doing. The kingdom of God is to help, uh, obviously, the lost and the broken to find redemption in Jesus Christ, to be born again, to be saved, but to also uh, raise up godly men and godly women, right? So uh, that is uh, an importance there uh, in that arena. So when I think about barriers and I uh, in uh perhaps ministry i there, you know there's a a number of things uh, could be peer pressure uh in uh, that could be within the church that could be within your uh, outside christian community or uh what have you but is it it can be the uh peer pressure or the ridicule that you may uh get from a friend right or what have you like ah oh, no, you're not a great singer. So why are you even doing song service? Like, why are you, why are you even doing that? I mean, come on, someone else is better than you, right? So you have that peer pressure, that ridicule. So I believe there's young people that face that and even older folks, but we're talking about young folks today and the social pressure. What does the world teach us? Do what your heart feels, do what makes you happy. Listen, sometimes uh, doing the will of God is not going to make you happy in the moment. Uh, but yeah, at the end scary. of result, the end, of, yeah, absolutely, right. The end result is that you will be happy, amen. Right. So that yeah. is a piece that we realize is that we have to deal with the peer pressure or even the ridicule. Listen, I wasn't a great song. Uh, I, I wasn't a great, uh, uh, you know, song leader. I could lead. Do can I carry a tune or sing at key? Uh, that's questionable. Amen. But I figured in my own life <laughs> is to is to minister, to do ministry. I could care uh, less to what someone will. You don't, you're not singing in in key. Listen, I'm singing to God. That's all that matters. Amen. All right. And I think too, with uh, young people, uh, could also be the lack of guidance. Right. So, you know, many young people and thank God for pastors in, uh, in, our, in our fellowship uh, that has helped me. And I'm very grateful uh, for that uh, because they've guided me. But some young people have a passion and have a desire. But they often don't tell uh, their pastor or they often don't share what that passion or desire is. So there's a lack of guidance uh, into that direction uh, to uh serve in whatever capacity uh, that may be in. I also think that distractions, right? So what distractions are blocking someone uh, from doing ministry? Listen, I, I get it, you know, uh, do your sports, uh, do uh, your extracurricular activities, do those things. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, is that more important than the will of God? Is that more important than uh, doing the things of God. So those are those are often those challenges that I see uh, and barriers. Uh, well, I want to go play sports because that's the that's what we do. Okay, who who who's we? Right, who's we? So I often think about that, and I also think about uh, some challenges of doubt. Who says you cannot? Who says you can't do? that ministry i'm not saying that you know you're you're you weren't asked to do it or are you who's, we we often uh disqualify ourselves because somewhere in our mind says that you can't do that who says you can't street preach right that's a that's a ministry uh so there's some of those barriers that i could think i mean i could go on and on uh, but those, those are some things and the last thing i would say is culture 
right? What what does the, there's cultural challenges? There, what we're teaching people to rely on other things than we're teaching people to rely on God. Ministry almost seems to be like an extracurricular activity. No, no, no. Ministry is the will of God. The will of God is your destiny. Your destiny is your salvation. Your salvation is keep you know you and I keeping on track in our hearts to serve God to keep that uh, to keep that at the forefront of our mind. You know we need to stay saved, and doing the will of God is one of the ways that helps you stay saved. Amen, one hundred percent, bro. That's like one of the the best ways to keep yourself safe is to keep yourself involved in the church and go to these outreaches, go to the Bible studies, the, uh, all these other stuff besides church, mm -hmm. like the meeting and all that. Um, just keep going. And I got a question. Um, personally, when you were the youth, did you ever had those same questions you brought up? Did you ever felt like there was some like things you could not do? because of the fact you of your age um I, I i mean um one of the challenges was getting to church right i mean i was uh, yeah. in, in a small church uh, i don't condone this i'm not saying go do this but i was driving without a driver's license for many many years uh <laughs> before i got a driver's license uh but i did that so i could get myself to church my parents uh said i could take the car or i you know i thank god for my grandmother too because she uh you know went to church and she served god and uh but she couldn't drive so i drove her or i drove myself where she couldn't go for uh, various reasons uh but yeah, I mean the law says you can't drive, right? So, but uh, but I did. But I, again, this was some years ago. Legally, not, rise. Legally, rise. You could you could probably <laughs> drive better than now nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> there's kids I know that could drive way better than the parents now. <laughs> That's but scary. we're talking. It's it is scary, but <laughs> yeah, I'm just just want to point that out and say you probably could drive, but don't do it because don't do it yeah no, i'm not no, condoning no. that let's, uh, let's try was, to stay within was, the law uh, <laughs> yeah stay within the law uh but this was uh you know this was 15 years ago uh or, or you know or, or 12 to 15 years ago i think if my math is serving me correctly uh, but i do not recommend that so uh, for the record do not follow the law do what's right uh yeah. and now there's uber there was not uber uh when uh, i was That's saved nice. at a young age uh, but there's uber now and uh now there's uh uh your church uh the church i was uh, a part of didn't have very many people uh to give me rides or what have you and uh but uh, believe in god to uh provide for you an uber driver or uber ride or a brother or sister in the church to take you to church so Mark, uh, mark my my word and put that on the record. I am not condoning <laughs> any <laughs> illegal activity. <laughs> so, um, I know that there um, is never one specific person that will build up a church. You know, there's always a a group of people, a body um, that will build up a church and uh, you know uh, continue to uh, grow because of them, not because of him or her so what uh, how would you explain the importance of being in ministry and having um having no boundaries in regard how important is it to be involved in ministry and such how important would you say that is well ministry is extremely important i i believe that uh churches uh the ecclesia uh is a place where you come to be a a participant and not a spectator you probably have heard that before uh, you don't come to church just to sit in the stands or what they would call the pews uh, you you come to church to be a part of what god's doing uh, in the local body in the ecclesia uh, it's not a concert it's not a place where you just come and say wow this is wonderful great message and then you go about uh, the bible yeah. calls us that to be a part of the body right that Christ is the head, but uh, you know there's different body, uh, different body parts, if you would, of the of the body, and no doubt did God give you talent, and no doubt did God give you um, uh, purpose, or no doubt that God give you these things, because listen, everybody is able, 
There's no, 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 there's no one that's not able. I've seen the disabled do things uh, that, that, that they're able to do. And they used it for the will of God. They used it for ministry. Uh, so I believe that everyone has a purpose and, uh, and you have to use what God has given you for his purpose. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about, uh, uh, you know, Hey, do, do I get to do the, that ministry, whatever that <laughs> ministry is, uh, you, do I get you, you know, the toilets. Yeah, do you get to scrub the toilets? <laughs> you know, hey, the the porcelain throne has to be clean and shiny uh, right. for for the operation of the church. But uh, you know, well, I'm not uh, good at that. Listen, you don't know if you're good at something if you don't try it. I'm talking about the will of God, the things of God, the ministry of, that God has uh, given or ordained uh, upon. Uh, an individual or where you're able to be used. So yes, it's crucial to be in ministry. Everyone's called to be a, uh, to be a participant of the will of God and the things of God. What is the ministry? I don't know. I don't know what the ministry is, but whatever God calls you to do, do it with your whole heart, with your whole mind, your body, your soul, but under the spirit and the anointing of God is critically important. Um, how important would you say as a pastor are disciples and people willing to work in your church? How important and how does that help you? How much does that help you in your experience? Well, well, as a pastor, I mean, any willing and able body uh, and uh, individual wanting to do so, extremely helpful, right? I, we're not called as pastors to do everything. We're called to disciple. We're called to teach. We're called to to in part, we're called to help people uh, find uh, the their their uh, calling, their purpose, their ministry. And I say that because even Jesus, right? Jesus went to the fisher, uh, the fishermen, and said, "Put that down. I'm going to make you fishers of men." Right? He called them. He helped them uh, in that. He he gave them direction. He guided them. Uh, so, am I saying that? Uh, this ministry is for that person, that ministry is for this person. That That's not uh, what I'm saying. What I'm saying uh, is that uh, God uses people that are willing. As a pastor, I don't force people to do anything. The reason why is because they're just doing it as a service, not as a desire or a uh impartation into the body of God, into the kingdom of God, right? So you have people that will do it because, hey, you're the pastor, or you have people that will say, you know what, I really want to do it. What 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 is it do, do you, you need or does the church need that I could be a part of? Because it's so much easier, right? Uh, when someone's willing versus having to pull teeth in, in other words. <laughs> I was going to be basically the same um, route my question was going to was basically how how would I afford this? <clears throat> um, let's see. Not the, how much? Not necessarily. Like, let's say someone has a ministry, right? And they're not going to that ministry full heartedly trying to do the best at that ministry. You just half half doing it right how much of an impact does that do to the church that would be is that gonna benefit the not necessarily the church because there's someone still doing it or would it just just throw a uh uh like a clog in the machine and mess up the whole dynamic of the church i think uh half-hearted uh service gives you half-hearted outcomes uh if you are a full-hearted servant you're you're gonna pour it out do the very best that you can uh, obviously under the strength of the spirit and direction of, of of god and your and your pastor uh there you, you'll get full-hearted uh results right um if you're doing something half-hearted you probably uh, should reconsider if you should be doing it or not. <laughs> that that's uh, uh, you know that's something that I uh, think about often. 
because you would rather put your whole heart into the things of God than be half-hearted, right? It kind of reminds me, it's, you know, in scripture where it's, it's either you're hot for me or cold for me, but not lukewarm. Right. Right. So God calls us uh, to be full-hearted in everything we do. We do. Do we lose heart? Absolutely. You could lose heart, but what do you do? You ask God, God, rekindle this fire, rekindle this heart and give me the anointing. Right? Give me the anointing. Uh, and give me the power of the Holy Ghost. Give me these things that uh, that will help me uh, do this wholeheartedly. And that's something we have to remember that when we're doing the will of God, ministry, purpose, especially as a young person, remember that you're doing it for God. You're helping other people uh, get closer to heaven if, if that makes sense uh, uh, to you, right? You're your friends, uh, they know if you're a half-hearted friend or they know if you're a full-hearted friend, right? So these things are extremely important that you do ministry. Now, if you do half-hearted, I'm not saying that God can't use that, but the whole saying, fake it to you, make it. Listen, you can't fake the kingdom of God. You can't fake your salvation. You can't fake your ministry till you make it because, listen, fraud doesn't stand. I, it just doesn't. And um, when you were talking about that, I thought of the uh, scripture, you'll recognize them by their fruits. And you were saying half-hearted ministry produces half-hearted results. So the uh, amount of work, or not work, but the amount of, um, uh, what's a good word? The amount of effort you put into your ministry will show. Uh, so uh, before we, do a quick outro. I wanted to mention three things. Uh, there was a, uh, it was a men's, uh, it was a men's class in Fresno, and uh, he, uh, Pastor John McCarthy, spoke about um, ministry, the calling to ministry, and as men. Um, but what I'm about to say uh, can apply to men and women alike, uh, youth, young adults, and even adults. But I asked him specific things to pray for. He said, pray for vision. Pray for God to give you vision for the future and what uh, he wants your ministry to become. Uh, pray for God's blessing on your ministry. Pray for God's anointing on you. Pray for, you know, specific things that will uh, help you in your ministry. Pray for God to bless you with those abilities. And then um, pray for a desire. Pray for a desire to do things for God. Um, and lastly, to pray for the vision you see in the future for the vision that you see uh, the vision that you see your um, your ministry becoming pray for that and pray for god's hand on that thank you guys for joining us for this episode thank you to pastor nago for joining us um, expect him next week for part two of this episode um, to keep in contact and in touch with us follow us on youtube give us a like share um, follow us on Spotify as well. Give us a good rating if you enjoy this content. Uh, visit our Instagram, little tagger here. Um, follow us there for updates and follow our YouTube shorts for updates there as well. Um, for our merch, check out our website. Email us at lightitupspotify at email.com for merch and for orders questions. Other than that, thank you guys. We'll see you next week. God bless. Appreciate the opportunity to uh, be on this podcast, uh, light it up with Wyatt and uh, Raphael. Uh, the thing I really want to emphasize in this time, as we call the altar call, the altar call is a place where we offer uh, to our hearers or to those that may be in our churches an opportunity to repent. You know, the thing about repentance is repentance is critically important and maybe uh, you've heard of these uh, testimonies, you've heard the podcast series and what have you. But I really want to emphasize um, this afternoon is that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you so much that he died upon the cross uh, for your sin. He paid a debt that he did not owe. And, uh, and every hearer has to understand it doesn't matter if you're young or old. It doesn't matter your circumstances. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter 
uh, your socioeconomics, it doesn't matter your education. What matters is the heart. The Bible tells us, beloved, that uh, that sin will separate you and I from God. And we have to be very careful that we don't become numb to what's happening uh, uh, in our hearts when it comes to the sin matter or to the issues of our hearts. And the critical, the critical importance to all this is the matter of your your life. Uh, it's life and death. It's Jesus, uh, and it's uh, heaven or hell. And this is not a scare tactic. This is the reality today that if you're dealing with sin that you ought to give your life to Jesus. You need to ask Jesus uh, to come into your heart. The Bible says that you must be born again. You you must ask God to move uh, in uh, your own life or Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. And I really want to say this because I uh, the, the platform here and the conversation today uh, was to the young people. I'm going to challenge every young person to make a stand. You could be a church kid, but your heart could not. Your heart uh, might not be right with God. You could be uh, new to uh, Christianity. You could be new to this channel. Or you could be new to listening uh, into this, and we're grateful for that. But I really want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You realize in uh, you may have read in Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord a plan to prosper you and not to harm you a plan to give you hope and a future listen your future is in Jesus but it has to start with salvation it has to start with you giving your life to Jesus so wherever you are uh, today I want you to bow your head and I want you to just listen to me for a few more minutes I want to ask you this question. Is there things in your heart that has caused you to be bitter? That has caused you to fall into a place of hatred? Is there things in your life that caused you to uh, really not believe that there's a God or not believe that Jesus could help you with your circumstances or your barriers or challenges in life? Listen, if there's sin in your life, if there's secret sin, if there's sin that you're dealing with uh, that maybe your parents don't know or your pastor doesn't know or your brothers and sisters don't know, but you know, listen, Jesus knows that you're dealing with that sin. Secret sin is things that you know inside your own heart, things that you do behind closed doors. You have to realize today that sin will separate you from God. Oh, but here's the redemption is that if you ask Jesus into your heart and he forgives you of your sin, he will give you the reward and the reward is salvation the reward is that you know keep your heart right fight for your salvation work out your salvation with fear and trembling that you would make uh, heaven your home someday that you're not your name will be written in the lamb's book of life you know all this may not make sense to you but what uh, i do know is that the holy spirit can move in ways that you and i have no idea that he can move he could speak to you uh, directly to your own heart and listen to me if you continue to play church games those games eventually comes to an end and it'll be game over would you like your heart to be found would you like your life to be found in the things of God or would you like your life to be found in things of this world the decision is up to you the choice is up to you and I pray today that you would join me in this prayer this afternoon that you would pray this prayer of repentance, that you would repeat this uh, short prayer after me. But I'm going to ask you when you repeat this prayer that you believe this prayer with your whole heart and everything that I'm about to say. So please bow your heads and say this after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. God, I don't understand everything in life, but I know and understand that I need to repent of all of my sins. Lord, wash my heart and my life as pure snow. Deliver me and set me free from all the sin and all the bondage in my life. I believe, Jesus, that you died upon the cross and you rose again on the third day. And I ask you to come into my heart 
and make me new again. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I'm asking, God, that all these that hear today, I'm asking you, God, that you would move upon their lives. You would help them right where they are. I pray, God, that there are young people that are battling, God, insecurities. They're battling what they should do with their lives. I pray, God, that you would give them direction. I pray, God, that you would heal the brokenhearted. God, that you would redeem, Lord Father, God, the lost. And I pray that when the going gets hard, God, for the young people that may be listening, God, even for those that may not be younger, I ask you for their lives to be in a place of peace, in a place of green pasture, in a place, God, that you would move. Even so, in their life, God, pour out your spirit upon them. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, you ought to make sure that you follow through with that. If you're part of our churches, follow uh, you know, if you're part of our churches, talk to your pastor, be in touch with your pastor and stay saved and stay right with God because Jesus is coming back. God bless you and stay saved, stay right with God. And most of all, stay on fire for Jesus and light it up for God and make a difference in this world. God bless you. Thank you for having me.